Now that I've discussed a lot about what is a series and lots of different tests to test if a series is convergent or divergent, I'm going to talk about a particular type of series called a power series. A power series has the form, the summation from k equal to zero to infinity of c sub k times x minus a to the k. Expand it out, this looks like c0 plus c1 times x minus a plus c2 times x minus a squared, and then we just continue this indefinitely, cn times x minus a to the n, and then we keep going. We call a the center, and the c's are the, co are the coefficients. And the main thing is we're looking at polynomials of increasing powers. Essentially, if I take the first n terms, I have an nth degree polynomial, and then if I keep going, I have an infinite degree polynomial. Our ultimate goal with these type of series, it's relatively easy to evaluate a polynomial. All we need is addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We may not want to do it out by hand, but it's not impossible. However, there are other functions like trigonometric functions, logarithmic functions, exponential functions that we cannot do using these four arithmetic operations. So the idea is I want to be able to estimate them with these power series since polynomials are easy. So in order to do this, we're going to start with the most basic type, which is going to be linear. So we'll do a linear approximation. And this goes back to calculus one. In calculus one, we learned about tangent lines. So if I want to approximate my function f of x near a certain point x equal to a, I can use the tangent line, which is y equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. And this can be super helpful, but the further and further I get away from this point, the worse of an approximation it is. It works well if the function has a fairly constant slope near this point A, but if it has a lot of curvature near A, this is not going to be a great approximation. For our purposes, I'm going to call this P1 of X rather than Y. So all I've done now is just change what I called this function instead of Y. We do P1 of X. And while this may not be in a great approximation, it does have some very important properties. In particular, P1 of A is equal to F of A, so it matches F in the value at A. And P1 prime of A is equal to F prime of A, so it also matches the slope of F. So it does actually hit F at the, certain, at the point X equal to A, and it has the same slope as my function. Since this won't be great if we have a lot of curvature near X equal to A, we're gonna bump it up to a quadratic approximation. For my quadratic approximation, I want to take P2 of X. So this is what I'm going to call it since it's degree 2. I have F of A plus F prime of A times X minus A. So this whole piece right here is just the tangent line, the P1 of X. And then plus C2 times X minus A squared. So I need my quadratic term. And we need to try to figure out what that C2 value is. And I do want a couple of conditions. First off, I do want it to match those important properties that I had with the linear approximation. I want it to actually pass through the point A, F of A. And I do want the derivatives to be the same, the derivative of this polynomial to be equal to the derivative of the function. And I'm gonna expand it even more. Since I'm dealing with a second degree polynomial, I also want the second derivative of this polynomial to match the second derivative of the function. And we can absolutely do this. You can see if I find P2 of A, that my quadratic term and the X minus A term are gonna cancel, I'm just left with F of A, so that's done. If we take the derivative of P2 and then stick in A, we will get that P2 prime of A is equal to F prime of A. And then if we take the second derivative of this polynomial, and stick in A, we'll actually get two times C2. So what we have is that if we actually take the second derivative of this polynomial that we have, and then plug in A, we get that the solution is two C2. But we want that to be equal to F double prime of A. 
So now I have the value of C2. It's the second derivative of F over two. So now I have that P2 of X, my quadratic approximation, is f of a plus f prime of a x minus a times the second derivative of f at a over 2 times x minus a squared. So before we expand this idea, let's do a couple of examples for quadratic and linear approximations. So let's consider the function f of x equal to e to the x at the point x equal to 0. And I want to find both a linear and a quadratic approximation. So in order to do these, I'm going to need essentially three things. I need f of 0, f prime of 0, and f double prime of 0. We know that e to the 0 is 1. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and e to the 0 is 1. And then we have the same thing for the second derivative. The second derivative of e to the x is still e to the x, so we still have e to the 0, which is 1. So let's start with the linear approximation. That said, f of a, so the first term, 1, plus the derivative, also 1, times x minus a. And in this case, a is just 0. So my linear approximation is given by 1 plus x. Now let's do the quadratic. For the quadratic, we start with the linear approximation, and then we just add on the quadratic term, which said the second derivative divided by 2. So the second derivative is 1 divided by 2 times x minus a squared, so times x minus 0 squared, or just x squared. So now I have both my linear and quadratic approximations. So now I want to estimate the value of e to the 0 0.1. Before, both of these approximations were estimating e to the x, so I'm letting x be equal to 0 0.1. So let's start with the linear case. I have p to the 1 of 0 0.1, so that's 1 plus x, or 1 plus 0 0.1, which gives me an estimate of 1.1. So now let's look at the quadratic case. So sticking in 0.1 for x, I have 1 plus 0.1 plus 1 half times 0.1 squared, which gives me 1.105. The actual value is about 1.105171. So we can see the quadratic did give us a really good estimation, and it is a better estimation than the linear.